I'm not going to waste your time. Let's just get straight to the point. Rust can be a super hard game to get into. No! But getting started in Rust doesn't have to be super complicated. If you follow these seven basic steps, I guarantee you can get an easy start, even on a high pop server. But anyone could just make a guide though. So why, sh why should you listen to me? Well, what I'm gonna do is it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna actually show you how to do these things in like a real actual live server. <laughs> I play this game a little bit too much, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. You ain't been outside in a while. First thing we need to do is pick a server. So picking a server might be the most important step out of all of these, because whichever server you pick will determine the difficulty level. Obviously, the more players that are on the server, it's, it's gonna be harder. This is not really a friendly game, so those other players are your enemies and they're gonna try to kill you. They're not gonna only just try to kill you, they're gonna try to ruin your day because that's the name of the game, that, that's Rust. And then we need to pick between modded versus vanilla. Vanilla is just the game in its basic form with like no mods, where modded you can have like gather multipliers or maybe kits to help you get started. I personally prefer vanilla just because that's how I've always played, but I think modded is a great way to get started out. A little bit more newbie friendly. If you do pick vanilla, just make sure you pick an official server. Community servers will be servers that are made by just like other players. Um, just don't pick the face punch ones because there's no admins on these. Typically there's more cheaters. Rustoria, Reddit, Rusty Moose, Rustify. These are all good ones with active admins. And you also want to check when it wiped. Servers usually wipe every Thursday unless it says like monthly or something. If you're just trying to learn the ropes and you do want to stick with vanilla, especially for your first time, pick a server with not too many people on it. Uh, we are going to pick a server with the most amount of people on it. So we have a higher chance of encountering any sort of hiccups and I can show you how to deal with those things. So here's the map. We started a day after wipe. So people will already have bases or already have guns and gear. So we have to decide where we want to build. So there's three different tiers. There's tier one, tier two, and tier three. Tier one monuments typically have the most amount of players, but they're gonna be low tier players. So you're gonna see a lot of nakeds, you're gonna see a lot of grubs, but most amount of people. Usually tier three is gonna have the least amount of players, but it's also gonna be fully decked out geared players. So I usually like to build in a place where I can sort of have options. I can switch between a couple different monuments depending on how contested they are. So I'm gonna build somewhere around here. Then we have a few different options. We have train yard, mining outpost, sewer branch, and even dome. And usually these little green things, these are vending machines. Usually there's gonna be more established bases in these locations. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So now that we got our build spot picked out, all we gotta do is get there. Should be pretty easy, right? Wrong. Everything in the game will be trying to kill you. You need to watch out for other players, animals, roof campers, and even just other nakeds will chase you to the ends of the earth. Dude, I'll follow you to the ends of the earth. I'll follow you to the ends of the earth. I swear to God. Most of the time it will take multiple attempts just running to your spot. So just try to mentally prepare yourself for that. It's gonna happen. Easy America. So when you spawn, you always start with a rock and a torch, but you never wanna be caught running around with a rock as your weapon, because you'd have to be so incredibly lucky to win a fight with a rock. So it swings so incredibly slow and it barely does any damage. So the first thing you wanna do when you spawn in is look around and since this is a spawn point and everyone likes to kill each other, you're gonna see a lot of dead bodies just lying around. Just go ahead and harvest the bodies and you get bones off the bodies. Just collect 30 bone fragments and make yourself a bone knife. Most people like to make spears at the very start, but you can actually get a bone knife way faster. And they're really strong because you can swing it while doing a full sprint, where most other melee weapons, anytime you swing it, slows you down. So if you're fighting someone with like a spear or a hatchet, most of the time, bone knife should win. And even if you go up against someone who has a bow, if you can dodge one or two arrows, a lot of times you can still beat them. Help, help, help. What up, bro? I need to fight you. It's for my video. Sorry. I'm just speaking to sir. Fight me. Oh no. Obviously the spear does more damage, but the bow knife just swings so much faster. So if you could just dodge like one poke of the spear, you should be able to get them. Obviously our main objective is to get to our build location. So we want to avoid fights if we can, but 
sometimes you're sort of forced to fight and you don't really have an option, so. I have all day. I got all day. All right. One huge mistake a lot of players still make when they're running to their build spot is they like to farm on the way. In a perfect world, yeah, this would be nice because by the time you get to your location, you already have stuff to get started with. The problem with this is, especially on a high populated server like this one, it's very likely that it's going to take you multiple tries to get to that spot. So by farming, you're very likely just farming for someone else. Also, if you have a lot of loot on you, it's gonna change the way that you play. You're gonna play a lot more scared. It's gonna be a lot more frustrating when you die. And that's how a lot of people end up giving up. <laughs> oh, shit. One thing we can do, cause it looks like our destination is kinda close to a railroad. We can take a train straight over there, hop off and just run across the train yard. And that'll probably be a little faster for us. So a lot of people like to wait till they get to their location to place the bag, but it's important to place bags as we're running because if we do die, which it's very likely that we will on the way, we have a respawn point so we don't have to run as far. Okay, so that bag just finished. We're just gonna place it right here. And we can respawn, heal up and run again. Hey dude, why are you guys chasing me? All right, don't come close. Don't come close. Okay, so we got a little fuel. We got seven. It won't get us far enough. I think we probably need at least 10, but um, we're just gonna hop on a train and try to get away from these guys because they're chasing me now. Okay, here's a train right here. So get us closer to where we're trying to go. And now at least we don't have to worry about those naked kids chasing me. Got my bag ready to go too. So once I hop off the train, I can just place this down. Hopefully there's not gonna be a dude on the on the railroads here with a gun just bop me in the head real quick. Okay, and we're kind of safe right here. We can look down, lower our head. So we're gonna hop off, place our bag down. That acts as sort of a save point. Looking around for players here. And we've actually made a lot of progress. So far, if I can just place this bag down, I'll be super happy. Okay, perfect. So now if we die, it's really not that big of a deal. We'll just respawn right there. Oh, that would be a roof camper. He's gonna be looking down at me for a minute. So I'm just gonna sit here for a couple of seconds. And let's see, there's shots over there too. Man, this place is popping. Oh, geez. Here we go. Whew. This is a prime example of why I always recommend playing on a, a less populated server because obviously there's, it's pretty player dense, especially in this area that I like because there's, I mean, it's a good spot and a lot of people have the same idea, but it's a good opportunity for me to expose any sort of hiccups you might come across. This actually looks like a really good spot right here. There's lots of uh, there's lots of trees around to sort of hide from the roof camper. I'm gonna put a bag down right here. Bag right there, perfect, perfect. So this is a somewhat safe spot right here because other people didn't build in this spot because this clan probably scared off a lot of other people. But now since their base is decaying, they're not here anymore. So now that we've picked out our build spot, we need to collect materials to start building our base. But what we definitely don't wanna do is carry around all the materials that we're collecting on our body. Because since it's such a hostile game, probably gonna get killed by someone and we don't wanna give up all our loot. Guys, Guys dude, you're so let's good. Go. Get it so what you wanna do is just place your bag down somewhere close by to where you think you're gonna build your base and you're gonna craft yourself a small stash. Most people place their small stash right in front of their bag, but it's super easy to find stashes that are like that. So just find a landmark close by. I'll just use this white tree right here. I'm gonna put it right next to this white tree. And anytime I get any materials, I'm just gonna put it right in there. So we're gonna build what's called a starter base, which we can later expand into a real base. But the starter base will have the bare minimum just to get it started. There could be an argument for maybe using a legacy shack first, but I'm personally not a big fan of those just because they only take two swords to get in and you're just telling everyone where all your loot is. Just use a small stash, no one's gonna find it. So now that we have somewhere to safely place our stuff, now we can start farming. So just gather yourself 
200 wood to start so you can pick up these little logs here and you're, you're gonna want to stay as hidden as you can so try, just try to stay inside the forest and just make sure you don't hit the tree down all the way. We just need 200 wood to start us out here. So you can find stone if you look on the map and see how there's a lot of ripply lines around this area. Well, that tells us that there's going to be a mountain right there. So it should just be right across the road. We should have a, a mountain. And there's going to be a lot of stone nodes on the mountain. And there it is. That's the mountain. Just gather up 100 stone. All it takes is four stone nodes with a stone pickaxe. That's all we need. Make yourself a pickaxe. Just going to hit these few notes right here. Now we're gonna go throw this in our bag real quick just to be safe. Okay, and then once you have enough stone, just go ahead and depot all this. And we're gonna switch over to wood. And I like to hit these fallen trees. You don't get that nice little bonus at the end when you hit the tree down. But when you hit the tree down, it's very loud. And a lot of players are super thirsty in this game. If they hear that you're hitting a tree, they know that you're vulnerable because just because you're farming. Even the tiny small trees, like you would think they'd be quieter, but nope, they're just as loud. So if you hit these fallen trees, you actually get more per hit, but overall you get less because you don't get that tree fall bonus. Okay, so we have enough now. I'm just gonna depot all this stuff while I place my foundations just so I can sort of mark my spot before I actually start building. I think just somewhere right here, kind of in the trees next to this decayed base. I think this is a really good spot. Fucking <laughs> hilarious, dude. Yeah, so I mean, that's a prime example for why you don't bring everything all at once because I only had 100 wood right there, so I really don't care that I died, but it'd be a lot different if I had all the materials for my base on me while I was doing that. Any time that you start building, people are gonna bum rush you as fast as they can. They're gonna drop anything that they're doing. They're on their phone with their grandma, she's dying. Hang up, they're coming for your twig base. So that's why I like to place my foundation down first because then when I have my stuff to build, the foundation's already placed, ready to go. I can look around and it's much faster just to bop, 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 put the walls down and then you're good to go. We're not even worrying about the door right now. Just walls all the way around that way we're not fiddling around with a door and a lock because we have 10 minutes where we can destroy a wall so we can worry about the door later we're just trying to get ourselves safe first now what we're going to do is we're going to place our tool cupboard and it's really important how you place this and i'll explain why in just a second but what you want to do is you want to place your tool cupboard in the back corner of the same side as where your door is going to be. So that means we want to place our tool cupboard like that. And you see how when I moved all the way to the left, the blue outline kind of went into the wall a little bit. It's really important that that happens. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to place a shelf. And we can place our double door right there. Put everything that you don't care about losing in this room, because this is gonna be our safe spot, and bring just enough to upgrade our single door frame. So there might be someone camping out here. So if we die, not a big deal if I lose the stuff on us. So we're gonna destroy this, upgrade, bam, we got our base. Okay, so we have a base now, but don't get too excited yet because we still have wooden doors and wooden doors are extremely easy to get through. If anyone has a couple Molotovs, your base is theirs, that easy. So we need to get metal as fast as possible. And to do that, we're gonna need to make a furnace. So we just need wood, stone, which we already have, but we need to get some fuel. So to do this, we just need to go hunting. So make yourself a bow and we're just looking for any type of animal. Okay, here's a bear. So. The thing with bears, if you shoot a bear and you're too far, it's just gonna run. So what you wanna do, you wanna try to aggro the bear first. Place a foundation super high like this. Don't run under it though, because for whatever reason, it makes the bear run away. So you don't wanna do that. But see, I can just kite the bear around like this and it'll, it'll never catch me. So what you can do is you just shoot under the foundation like this and then you can avoid taking damage and just kill the bear like this. Okay, so it's running away now, so that means it's gonna be super weak. Probably just one more shot. There we go. And this will give us enough resources to make two furnaces. Okay, so now we can make our furnace, and I like to place mine just right here. So now since we have a furnace, now we can start smelting our metal ore. You can find metal ore in the same place you just got your stone from. Just look on the map for the little rocky areas. And we just need one node. If you have two furnaces, you can split it up in both. 
It'll go a little faster. Turn them on. And so each one of these will smelt into about 230 metal. And while we're waiting for that, it's really not a good idea to door camp your neighbors because all I have to do now is just respawn outside. Watch where this dude is gonna run back. Oh, there's his base. Let's go pay him a visit. So it's just like an eye for an eye. It doesn't make sense to do this with your neighbor. Like I got better sh to do than just door camp each other all day. Cause when you kill them, 100% they're coming back and they're gonna door camp you. But also if you live in a small base with just one exit, it makes you a super easy target to door camp. Cause if I hear you moving around in a small base like this, I know that there's only one place you can come out from. So I can just wait here. You don't know I'm here and you'll get caught with your pants down. <laughs> What's up bro? Who are you door camping? Casey? Yo, KCMO, bro. Lock in. But one thing you can do to help prevent being door camped, we're just gonna upgrade this. We're gonna build what's called an airlock. And basically what this does is I open this door, someone kills me with the door open, boom, I'm dead. Well, now they can't jump in here to loot my furnaces. See? Okay, now we can craft a metal door and Bam! Now we are flame proof. So next up, we need a workbench. So for a workbench, we need 50 scrap and 100 more metal. We'll have enough metal in a sec here. You should probably have enough scrap just from playing the game by now. 50 scrap isn't really that much. If for whatever reason you don't have enough scrap, the safest way to get it would just be running along the road and just hitting these barrel spawns. It's like these little trash spawns that'll spawn on the side of the road. You can just farm these. Obviously farming monuments would be a lot faster, but right now you won't have anything to protect yourself. So if you're going the safe route, just do the road. You'll get in like five minutes. Okay, and then once you craft it, I like to put mine right here. And this is gonna open up a lot of things that we can craft. Main ones being crossbow and nail gun, which you don't need a BP for. If you can get close enough to even like a geared guy, you can easily kill him. And you can do metal tools. Ladders are nice, so you can climb up on people's bases, so like a roof camper or something, you can. Oh, and then you can also use ladders to block people inside their own bases. You can just place ladders like right in front of people's doors and they can't leave. Now, obviously they can just pick it up with a hammer, but most of the time they have to go back into their base, you know, grab a hammer and then come out. So that gives you plenty of time. Swords are really good for breaking down certain items like legacy shelters, for example. Compound bows are really strong for like bush camping and third partying other people's fights. And then water pipe and double barrel are also really strong guns. These ones are the ones that you would use if you're like door camping someone. They're pretty cheap, so it doesn't really matter too much if you die with it. And then shock and traps, of course. Shock and traps are super good, especially because they don't use any electricity. They just magically shoot you. Just make sure when you place them, don't place them like this. Because yeah, you can maybe surprise someone when you open the door like this, but you can also just shoot it out right here from this angle. Um, what you really want to do is you want to place it on any sort of drop down where they can't see. An example would be like this. And shotgun traps take two shots to kill you. So what you can do to make it an insta kill is just place two of them, kill you in one shot. Okay, so just from that one node, we were able to make a sheet metal door, a workbench, then we have 200 metal left over. So now we can also make a couple large boxes for storage. Large box, you can just place back here, you can put another large box right here. And this is the most optimal way, optimal for storage, to place your boxes and everything in your one by two. Because believe it or not, these four boxes have more storage than one large box. And then we just wanna move our bag to right here. And see, this creates like a little ramp now. So I can, instead of having to jump up this every time, see with the door, it's kind of, annoying to crouch jump. So with, with the bag, I can just I can just walk in. Makes it a lot easier. And see now, if I come out here, and since I placed my tool cupboard far back enough right there, I can place a shelf through the wall. See that? Let's do it out of wood for now. Take this door off, place that there. Bam, look at that. So we got all these boxes, the sheet metal door, the workbench, all for just hitting one node. And then as soon as you have the materials, you wanna get your entrance off the floor as fast as possible. 
this will limit the amount of door campers you have by a lot. Because if they have to climb up on top of your base to door camp you, they're gonna be a lot less likely to do so. All right, so we got our starter base, but there's just one problem. How do you plan on protecting your base when you log out? Especially if you've been PVPing, someone can't beat you in a fight, no problem. Just wait till you log out and they'll, they'll get their pay back then. But what if I told you there's a way to stop this? That's a lot amount of hype. This better be like the most 400 IQ tip I've ever seen. <laughs> It is, but I promise, money back guarantee. If you wanna learn how to never get raided again, watch this. I've been using this on every single one of my base designs, and I haven't been offline a single time because of this. 